So what we want to build here is some kind of application in with canvas in the web where we can draw those lines, where we can have multiple lines, where I can draw a line like that, and so on. So that's the main goal. What do we do for that? Well, we create a folder called, let's call it line draw. Then we open that folder within code sandbox, not code sandbox, within Visual Studio Code. And in here, we just create an HTML file and a JavaScript file. So index.html and script.js. In the HTML file, we just put our normal HTML setup. We can give the title draw line. And in here, we really just need a canvas. And we need to import the script. Script. And the source is our script.js. Here, make sure you see that you have your dot slash because the JavaScript is in the same folder. And then the JavaScript file, let's say console log running JS file, like that. And then we can open it. So there's two ways to open it. One way is to go in here and double click on your index.html, then it should be open. The other way is to get an extension, which is called open in browser for Visual Studio Code. And once you download that, you can also just right click and say open in default browser. And then it's also open over here. Then let's have a look where it says running JavaScript. So we know our JavaScript is running and we can start interacting with our DOM. So first thing first, in here, we want to get our canvas. So cons canvas equals document query selector, and we want to select the canvas. Cool. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to set the width and the height of the canvas to fill out the whole screen. Hmm. So to do that, I'll do two things. First, I add some styling and say canvas background black just to see where the canvas is. Right now, we see the canvas is up here. We also see there is some kind of space in between up there, and we want to get rid of it so we can really fill out the whole space. To get rid of that, we just need to set the margin on the body to zero. Yeah. And now what we want is we don't want to increase the size. Right now it's just the default size of 300 to 150 pixels. And we want to make it fill out the whole screen. So how do we do that? Well, we can access the size of the window with window.inner height. You see that's 945 right now and window dot inner width. That's the width. So if I improve this up here is in the top part you see now when you move that you see the amount of pixels. Now it's 611. If I do window dot inner width it will be 611. So what I want to do at the beginning is just to fill out the whole screen. So we need to set the width and the height. We won't do it in HTML, uh, in the CSS, because we want it to be dynamic. Every time a person opens the screen, we want to adjust the size. So we can do canvas dot uh, width equals window dot inner width and canvas dot height. So window dot inner height. Save. So now 
when we refresh our page, the width and height of the canvas is set to the full screen. If we start resizing, it won't adjust to it because we don't listen to any events of when the browser is resized. So we could add that, for that we would listen to events which the browser gives when you start resizing it. Uh, there is an event for it, I think it's called on resize. And then we could just call that, but for now we just leave it like that. But every time we just refresh our page, we'll, make, we'll fill out the whole thing and just adjust it to the current size. So that's what we have there. And then we have our canvas. Now we need to start think about how can we draw to it. Okay, so if we want to draw onto the canvas, we need to access the context of the canvas because the context will give us a lot of functionality to interact with the browser and actually draw something to it. So const context equals canvas.get context. And then you see we can get two decon Dex, Bitmapper, WebGL, WebGL2. What we want to do is just to get the 2D context because for now we just want to be drawing in 2D. And also I'll make this shorter and abbreviate it for CTX for the word context. Okay, now we have everything we need to draw something to it. So we could draw something by saying Context of begin path, context of move to. So here we define where the line should start. We could say like 100, 100, context line two, uh, 200, 200, context stroke style. Because can make it red, and then we have to say stroke to actually draw it. Now we see we have this kind of thin line somewhere in there. Uh, that's how we can draw something. So what do we do here? Context top begin path. This means we start a new path. Then we say move to somewhere, make a line from this point to this point which will be diagonal because we do go down in x and y direction. And then we say we want to make the color red and then we stroke it. We could also do multiple lines and only stroke at the end. So stroke we actually only need to call once once we have created all our lines because here I could also say for example let's have one from 300, 300 to 300, 400. So this line will just go down in y direction because only y will be increased. So in fact, we need to call stroke twice, but we only need to call it once for every begin line. So we can begin a line, make multiple line two, so create a line with multiple edges, and after that, we only need to call stroke once, not after every time we add a new line to. We'll see an example for that later on. Yeah, so now we have both lines. Um, we can make some adjustments to them. So. We can increase uh, the width of the line by using the line width. So in here, we could say context of line width equals 50. And down here, we can say context of line width equals 100. Yeah, so <laughs> um, this now still looks like a line because we kind of move 100 down, 100 left. And 
we have a line width of 50 here. It looks kind of like a square, but it's still a line. If I would make the line longer, let's say we go to 800, it's probably outside of our screen, not yet. So you see, this is our line. So with the width, we can adjust line width, we can adjust how fat that string will be, or that line will be. And then we can also change the style. So here we could, for example, adjust the style to context dot uh, line cap equals round. Let's have a look what that does. It changes the line ends to be round instead of being square, like up here. Yeah. And then let's say I have a line to there and then something like that. So here I make a line down and then to the right, which means down and to the right. And now this corner is still kind of not very round. To change that, we can also change context.line join and make them round as well. And now we have two nice lines. Okay, so what did we see here? We saw how to use the 2D context to create a line. How do we do that? We begin a path, we move our cursor to somewhere, then we draw a line, then we can set as the width, then we can set the color, and then we can stroke it to draw it to the canvas. Next up, we can also uh, start a new line, move the cursor somewhere else, or the starting point somewhere else. Then we can go make one line, make a second line. Uh, we can set the line width to a different size. And then we can also adjust the style of the line with line cap and line join as well. And at the end, we also stroke it. Okay, so we saw how we can draw a line. Um, now, we'll probably want to draw a lot of lines. So we will reuse this functionality all the time. So let's write the function for that. Function draw line. Okay, and what do we pass in? A line. How should a line like that look? Well, a line should probably be some kind of object. And in that object, we will have a starting point, like an x and a y. So uh, we could have a start x, for example, 100 y, 100. And we also need an endpoint x 100 200 y 200 and then we also need some kind of information about how thick the line should be line width can make it 50 we can give it a stroke style so what kind of color it should have we can just make it red stroke style and then we can also pass in what kind of line cap it should be let's make it round and also line join round okay so then we have kind of the same functionality hmm but One kind of problem we have here is that, well, what happens if we want to have multiple lines? So we have one line which goes from he up here to down here to over here. So it would be one line with which is connected. Well, then we will probably need some kind of array and move those things into an array so we can have multiple ones. Then it would also make to have a sense to have this property line join of how these joints should look. For now, 
will just make it simpler. We only make lines which go from one point to the other without curves. So we add that and so we can use this simplified version of start and end. Okay, so that should be our our object which we pass into draw line. What else do we need? Well, we also need the context. Okay, so let's say we need the context and we need the line. Okay, then in here we can say move to line.star.x and line.star.y. Then we want to make a line end to the and line end y. So we can get those two properties. Then we said we only want to have it to be one line or to be a line of just multiple points where it touches. So we do that, we remove that. Then the line width should be just line dot line width. And the line cap should be line dot line cap. The join we will be not using in our program for now, so we remove that. And then the style will also be line dot line uh, line dot stroke style. So we keep it somewhat nice to the original API. Okay, and then we can just say draw line, pass in the context and our line. Let's see. Okay, we have a line in there. That works. Well, if you would do blue, it would be blue. If we would set this to null, it will take the default, which is squared. And if we make the line width smaller, it will be smaller line width. Uh, yeah, and then we can maybe also say it should just go into the horizontal direction, so we remove the y direction, so it will be just horizontal. Let's make it fatter again. Okay, and this is also where you can see better that okay, if I set x, x starting point will be here, and end point of x will also be here, so it won't go change into x direction. And here I increase y, so it will be going down in y direction. Very nice. So that's what we built so far. We got the canvas, we set the inner width and height to that, so that should be still working. Very nice. Then we get the context of canvas. We create a function which draws a line. It takes in the context and an object which is the line. The line contains a start and an end, a line width, a stroke style, and a line cap. So these are the things we need to pass in. And then we can call our function to draw a line.